Hello, I'm Ian Pearce from ACB TV, and I'm joined today ahead of kickoff for a very special Crystal Palace preview with Commonwealth Cruiserweight champion Chris Billum Smith, Junior Cherries Evie and Finn, and of course, Cherries left back Charlie Daniels. We're going to talk a little bit about today's game, a massive game, of course, and you've got the first question, Finn. Take it away. Yeah, um, I was just wondering about your injury um, before lockdown. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it come at a good time or a bad time for me. Uh, yeah. I was at a point where I could go on a bike and I could go in the gym. Uh, so I was, I was at a good pace. But then, obviously, when lockdown hit, I couldn't work with a physio. So having a physio with me day in, day out and not, not being able to see him was uh that was that was that was tough i think for, especially for my knee you know it needed that a little bit of tlc and that but you know I, I tried to do as much as i can and things progress pretty well and you know now we're we're kind of out of it in terms of footballing uh i'm out running on the pitch which is good news yeah yeah and thank you <laughs> good stuff. and um chris i'm sure you'll be watching the game where will you be watching the game from tonight um, it'll be, I'll be here at home on this sofa ahead of me. I've got my, the TV. Um, so um, it was meant to be uh, me and my fiance's hen do this weekend. So she's planning um, something with the girls. So they're out tonight. So I, I can, I can watch the game in, in peace. <laughs> oh, so how, how has that affected them? Obviously lockdown, we've had about a lot about weddings that have been cancelled and what have you. How has that, how that affected you? Yeah, massively. To be fair, I mean, we um, we were planning to get married in Italy uh, on the eighth of August, um, but obviously with everything that's gone on, and obviously I had fight. I was meant to have two um, fights before the wedding and stuff, and so yeah, it all just got um, postponed. Basically, I got the, we cancelled the one in Italy, and we're hoping to get married um, back in Bournemouth in late September now because we, we'd like to get married this year. So. Fingers crossed that things calm down by then and we can uh, and get the go-ahead. I certainly hope so. Fingers crossed from, from us as well then. <laughs> Thanks. And Evie, I'm, I'm sure you've got a question for Charlie as well. Would you like to fire away? Uh, yes. Yeah, so how do you think it will feel without the fans there tonight? Yeah, it's going to be a strange one. I mean, if you see the games that was on uh, during the week and you see the, the German league and that, it's definitely something different. And... You know, football is never going to be the same without the fans. And, uh, you know, we can do as, mu as much as we can to make it feel like the fans are there. You know, we're going to, you're going to, a lot of players are going to have to, you know, get themselves ready, you know, get themselves pumped up because, you know, you do feed off the crowd and you say not to have them there. It's, it's going to be tough, but, you know, it's a, it's a massive game tonight and, you know, we're going to need some points. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What's training been like in the sort of build up to, to the Crystal Palace game? What's that been like compared to sort of maybe a norm, normal pre season when you've got a, maybe a bit longer to prepare? Yeah, it's been a lot different. I mean, just coming, like going in your car to the training ground, doing training, and then having to go straight off. That's probably the biggest difference that everyone's seen uh, and felt. But apart from that, I think it, it's, it's been going okay. I mean, obviously. Everyone would say they would like a little bit longer to get themselves fitter and that, but you know we're, you're going to have to do it at some point. And they say tonight's the night, and you know we got right there and, and show that we're we're ready and that we're we're fighting to, to stay in this league. So unfortunately, the supporters aren't able to go to the game tonight. But we haven't asked you what are your plans for Saturday. Are you really able to go to the stadium? I don't know yet. Do you know that? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm hoping. I'm waiting for a last minute call up so I can I can join in the stadium but uh at the minute I'm at home just watching it in front of the telly like everyone else right you'll have to start the chance Charlie yeah I'm gonna have to yeah I'm gonna have to start <laughs> doing something <laughs> I'm gonna try and get on the on the uh making doing the crowd noises I'm gonna try and do that from home if I can that'd be quite good <laughs> that's a good point what has everybody made of these FIFA crowd support we've heard so far from from the games we've been able to see so far? I think it's definitely got a lot better from the start. I mean, I watched the start of the, the German league and to hear all the players screaming and that, it's, it definitely needed something a little bit over the top. So for me, it's, it's definitely enhanced it. How about you, Chris? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, from a viewing point of view, it's, it's much, much better. Obviously, it's, it's only on the broadcast, so um, but it, it felt a lot more normal. Um, I was watching the obviously the Villa game um, and the and the City game on, on um, Wednesday night, so it, it made it more more realistic um, and things like that. So uh, it was from a viewing point of view, it, it was good. But then at the same time, you, you like to hear what goes on. <laughs> on the pitch but maybe the players don't want that but um it's interesting from a from a fan's point of view to hear what's going on so um obviously you could you could switch between the two you could have it with or without commentary so i, I did a little bit of both that's excellent and um i believe you um i'm talking to evie and, and finn here i believe you've got special plans for tonight with with watching the game yeah so we've got some uh, friends coming round because obviously we're really missing the um, community of Bournemouth because we're all family and we're all fans together. And so we've really been missing going up to the shop and being at the matches and watching them all. So we've got some friends coming round who will be social distancing with watching it in the garden. <laughs> that sounds excellent. That sounds great. <laughs> Lots of snacks and everything, I'm sure, as well. <laughs> and how about Charlie, your family? If, assuming you are able to get to the game, what will your family be doing? Uh, they'll be at home. Well, the kids will be in bed, hopefully, <laughs> to begin with. And then, yeah, I think the missus will probably be watching it. Uh, especially, say, it's the first game in such a long time. I think there'll be so many people watching it. And for it to be on BBC, the first Premier League game on BBC, you know, it's a big occasion. So I'm expecting a lot of people to be watching it. So uh, let's, uh, hopefully we can put on a performance to match it. And I'm sure Eddie Howe won't want to give away too many secrets about Crystal Palace and, and how we're preparing for them. But how have we been able to prepare for them? And obviously we know some of the, the talents they've got. Yeah, I think we've had enough time to prepare for the game in terms of having <laughs> all this lockdown. So, you know, uh, Crystal Palace have some outstanding talent, especially in attack. If you look at just Wilfred Zaha, for instance, and Josh Townsend, you know, they, they're players that can change the game. So for us defensively, it's going to be everyone's going to have to be on their, their A game, really. And then uh, going forward, you know, we've got so much strengths going forward that, uh, you know, we can hurt any team. So if we can keep them quiet in our in our half, then uh, I'm sure we can do a lot of damage in theirs. And you're probably better placed than most people. But what will Eddie Howe be saying to people at 7.40, just before they get lined up in a tunnel and they're ready to go out? What sort of team talk can you expect tonight? Definitely enjoy it. We'll probably be the first one. Uh, embrace it, embrace the situation that's that's happening and, you know, play, just be the best player that you could be. You know, that's that's what he says most most games, you know, enjoy it, embrace it and, and be the best version of yourself, you know, if, if and if everybody does that and, you know, more often than not, we get a positive result. And Chris, you're obviously an elite sports level, a sportsman, sorry, albeit in a different sport. What? How does that differ to, to you when you're ready to go out in the ring and let's get ready to rumble and it's all building up? Yeah, well, obviously there's there's talk of the boxing being behind closed doors, and hopefully I can get on one of those shows. Um, but I've actually had to I've experienced it before in my second bout. Um, George Groves was a stable mate of mine. He was world champion, defending his um, world title, and he managed to get me a slot right at the beginning of uh, one of his shows. And I literally walked out to no ring music or anything. The doors were closed. There was no one in an eight. It was in Wembley Arena and eight thousand seater, but there was no one in there because I was on first. So. Um, that was an experience, but then uh, all my fans came in because they basically sort of barged past the security because <laughs> the security weren't meant to open the doors at a certain time, but I got told they were going to be open. And then, yeah, it was a bit of a crazy situation. So um, from my point of view, it's good that I've got that experience in the bank if I have to draw on it, because um, before the, I was actually in the ring, in the first, just before the first bell, all my, all my lot just ran, ran in making, there was about, only about 70, 70, 80 people there that day, but um, they all made ran in and made some noise and uh yeah but it was a very strange experience and I it for me it, it sort of took my mind off it a little bit I was like cause I didn't know there was going to be no entrance tune I didn't know it was going to be sort of the way it was and then um I was walking to the ring thinking that I was like where where is everyone I, I thought the doors were going to be open so at least I guess from a footballer's point of view they they know there's no one's going to be there um and they can probably listen to instructions a little bit easier but um um, yeah, it was, a, it was a strange experience, but thankfully I've had it now if I have to go and box. 
And what are those emotions like, Chris? Because you've obviously built up for weeks and months and put all your focus into one thing in one evening and then it's kind of showtime. How, how do you deal with all that pressure or the emotion that must be building up? It's, um, you know, it's once you're in the ring, it's a ring's a ring and you, you've got to get the job done. It's, you sort of see it as a spar in a, in a way, you know, a, a sparring session where you, it's, it's just another day at the office. Um, you've got to get yourself mentally up for it and, and, and focus. And I mean, once the first bell rings, most of the time you switch on wherever you are. Um, and fingers crossed that'll be the same with the with the football with the lads. So hopefully they once that first whistle goes, it'll be um, game faces on and, and ready to go. Perfect. And have you got any questions for any of your other participants here, Chris? Um, I was just wondering how your injury's going, Charlie, how, how, how recovery's been? Yeah, no, everything's going really well, actually. I started running outside this week, so I've had three running sessions outside, which is, uh, which is a big step, you know, you know, being indoors for nine months, it's, uh, it's been, <laughs> it felt like I had the long, longest lockdown ever. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good feeling to come out, to be outside running and, you know, feeling that you've accomplished like a, a big part of the recovery and now we're uh, hopefully on the downhill stretch, you know, give myself a couple of months to get as fit as I can be and then join in with the lads. Oh, and you signed point. a short-term deal until the end of the season, so we know yeah. you've got you till, till the end of the year. Um, what's the likelihood of you potentially playing at all this season? Uh, if there's no other outbreak, it's un unlikely. Uh, you know, I'd, end of July, I think it's just going to be that little bit too soon. I think I'm, uh, I'm looking at August, August time to, to be back involved. So, yeah, I think it's going to come a little bit too soon, but uh, all ready for next season. And do you know what the future holds? No, not yet. No, I say we just signed that short-term deal to the end of this season, and then uh, and then we'll see what happens after that. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot more going on in the world than uh, than me just signing an extra contract. You know, we need to get things sorted out first uh, in the world before before we can uh, get involved in my contract. So. Uh, you know, I just I just sit back and, and wait. You know, there's uh, there's a lot of football to be played and uh, a lot of other stuff as well. So we'll see what happens. And Evie and Finn, you've been sitting there very patiently and quietly up there. As brother and sister, I'm sure you can fight between yourselves as who would like to ask the next question. Um, you can ask. Thank you. Um, <laughs> one for Charlie. Um, who do you think is the greatest threat from Crystal Palace tonight? Uh, I'd have to say Wilfred Zaha. You know he's uh, he's probably their their leader on the pitch. If you're talking about when they, when they've got the ball, you know he can he can go both ways. He's such a he's such a threat, and you know you can see why Man United paid so much money for him just because of his talent. I mean, he's probably a little bit too soon it was too soon for him to move, but I think he's realised it now and he's he's come back. You know, and he's he's flourished again. You know, being back at home. And uh, you say it looks like he might be on the move again, maybe. Yeah. And how about you, Evie? So uh, this is sort of for both of you. So how has, um, so for Charlie, how's training been different with being tested twice a week and both of you with the facilities and um, how's it been different? Yeah, no, it's, well, testing, say it's, it's definitely different. You get time slots and, you know, you have to turn up and you have to stay in your car. Uh, you get tested and then you walk, you drive around, get out of your car and then you've got to get your temperature checked before you can go into the, the change room and that. So it's uh, it's definitely been different, but it's something you just get used to after a while. You know, it just becomes a norm. And, uh, and I think it's going to be staying for a little bit. So I think everyone has to get used to it. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. And for you, Chris? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm... I've actually just been, we just started camp this week. Um, obviously there's a small, only a small group of us that train. Um, but it's during lockdown, it was, uh, it was difficult because I'm, I'm used to having a coach there telling me what to do and, you know, scheduling out my whole week and stuff. So um, I was doing a, I've got a little scaffolding rig in, my, in our front garden because we haven't got a back garden. So we're just, uh, my brother's a scaffolder. He put up a little rig so I could do some squats and pull-ups and I held a punch bag off it. So I did a few things there. Uh, thankfully, the weather was good because, you know, it hasn't been as good this week. Um, 
but yeah, it's been and then just been doing a lot of running. Obviously, a lot of people have, have been getting into their running and stuff, and been using the facilities down um, Kings Park ne next to the training ground at the track, the athletics track there, and doing my sprint sessions and stuff. And it's been a big benefit to me. Um, you know, just having that it's probably helped me mentally because you you have to make yourself accountable. Um, and you don't have someone just telling you what to do. You, you know, it's a bit, bit more responsibility on your on your own part. So, I think the boxing wise, with people coming out of lockdown, it'll be a lot of see who who wants it most sort of thing, and see who has been lazy because they haven't had the facilities or someone there telling them what to do. So it'd be uh, be interesting to see what what comes out of it. And I know you were supposed to have a, a big fight in May, which unfortunately didn't make it. Um, how fit are you compared to where you'd hope and you'd expect to be at this stage? Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I was actually quite surprised this week in, in training. I thought I was going to be a lot worse, but um, I think the sprint sessions, that they've been pretty grueling sessions and um, been putting the, putting the shift in. So um, with boxing, it's slightly different from football. Obviously, footballers are fit all year round, where boxing is very much a, a peak sport where you, you peak for one night. Um, so you don't want to be, you know, peaking too soon and, and stuff like that. But um I've, yeah, I was, I'm happy with where I'm at and definitely I'm hoping to be out in six or seven weeks, um, start of August, if all goes um, to plan with the matchroom fight camp. So fingers crossed that I can get on one of those and I feel like I'm a really good place, um, good starting block to to get, get going and get camp fully underway. And um, we've asked you lots of questions, Charlie. Oh, Charlie might have disappeared. Oh, sorry, He's back again. sorry someone, someone just called me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, um, Charlie, have, have you got any questions for anyone else in the group here? Yeah, I was going to ask Chris, uh, how long is a normal camp and what does it look like uh, day to day in terms of sessions wise? Uh, yeah, we do usually we do two sessions a day, uh, Monday to Friday, um, but then maybe one on the weekend. So we do a punching session every day, whether that's pads or sparring. Um, and then we'll do two sprint sessions a week, one long run a week, uh, two strength sessions a week and a circuit as well. So it's usually twice a day, Monday to Friday, uh, one punch in, one run, circuit or strength. Um, and usually the length of camps are usually, they vary from eight to 12 weeks. But um, I'm starting now to do proper camps like that because at the beginning of my career, I was learning a lot and I always wanted to be in the gym. Um, so, I mean, our first four fights were in 11 weeks of each other. So I was in camp for three months of my first fight. And then there was another fight four weeks later then four weeks later and then three weeks after that. So it was, um, that was pretty brutal schedule, but thankfully the, the fights weren't too long. So um, um, that was, that was a good thing about that. But yeah, I mean, a camp, obviously this camp's going to be probably six or seven weeks, which is shorter than ideal, but like I said, I feel like I'm in a, a good place. So hopefully, um, all, all being well with the fights go ahead, I'll be um, be be ready to go early August. And Charlie, I know Arthur Barch is is quite into his boxing, and I've spoken to yeah. other players who, who've certainly said they're big fans of watching boxing. How about yourself? Yeah, I've watched a few fights, especially growing up. I watched a couple of Chris's fights when he uh, when he fought and he, and he won. So uh, it's definitely something you get interested in. But to do the camps is is another thing. I mean, to, to actually put yourself in their position and to, to put their body through what they go through is, uh, is another thing. And it's, uh, it's certainly a testament to the sport, just how, how much force they, they get put under. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You've done a couple of easy. sessions, Charlie, have you? <laughs> uh, no. Did you go up Bendel's at all? No, I'll tell you what. So all the goalkeepers go up there, didn't they? Yeah, I think I've seen... I think they just... They just skive off. They skive off from football. That's what they do <laughs> on a Monday when they can't be bothered to come in. As you can see, Arthur gave me one of his tops. Yeah, I, know, so yeah. I, was, uh, I was grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, big yeah. man loves his boxing. Yeah, he's he's he's. A, he, I took him on the pads once actually. Um, yeah, he could definitely whack. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Uh, he's good mates with uh, Fafana. Yeah, yeah, he came up the gym. Um, with yeah. Him. Yeah, so uh, I think that's where it's, it's come from and they've done a lot, a lot of sparring and that together. Oh, yeah, that's good. And Evie and Finn, have you got any, any last questions before we let Chris and, and, and Charlie go? Um, well, one last one. Have, have either of you been um, learning anything new on lockdown or what have you been doing to kind of keep occupied apart from staying fit? Uh, I've been trying to stay fit and keep the kids occupied. It's probably my main thing uh during lockdown 
I got a five year old and a two year old and they uh yeah, they they've needed a lot of attention. So trying to keep them occupied and you know, it's it's been tough. Uh but now like the eldest has gone back to school. The last couple of weeks he was allowed to go back to school, so we uh he's been in so there's a little bit of normality coming back to us. But uh yeah, so them two things are probably the main thing I've been doing. Yeah. yeah. As for me, it's, uh, to be honest, it's probably been housework. I've learned I had to, had to do a little bit more housework than I usually would because I'm away all week, usually Monday to Friday. Um, so, yeah, I've uh, been put in my place and uh, I've learned, <laughs> learned a lot of housework and just um, but during the day and stuff, just chilling out. Got a guitar, which I've kind of tried to teach myself over the years and played a little bit more of that, which has been nice. But, um, yeah, for me, I've been doing more housework than I, than I usually do, but it's, uh, it's all, for the, all for the better. And Ian and Finn, how have you survived lockdown then? Yeah, that was uh, well, <laughs> Quite like um, Ake, who's been learning to do the piano. Um, mm. I, I have played the piano before, but it, he's encouraged me to um, do it more during lockdown and get more practice in. And um, we're very lucky to live in the countryside. So we've been going on lots of cycling, um, route we've been walking a lot and um we've been outside a lot more apart from obviously doing school which has keep kept us occupied we've been definitely trying to go outside stay fit and have as much normality as we can during lockdown very good and, and yourself in what have you been doing yeah i've just been trying to stay fit as well i've been doing a lot of goalkeeping in the garden with my dad and um the school's kept me quite busy but I've been, I definitely be doing more exercise um, because, yeah, it's been, it's actually been quite good for me to uh, like stay on top of everything because usually my dad isn't here. So we've been doing a lot of bike rides around the village and everything. Finn's a very keen goalkeeper and he's been trying to teach me as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it works. So then, right, as a final piece, then, I, I guess we've got to ask what our hopes and maybe even our predictions are for tonight and what we hope is going to happen in the big game against Crystal Palace. And I'll kick off with you, Chris. Uh, I'm genuinely uh, feeling very positive about the game. Obviously, other than, than Charlie, we've got um, le a lot less injuries in, in the squad. So we've got a lot more, you know, I think that's been the downside to the season with the with the injuries and stuff and obviously you're hearing good things about people coming back such as uh, David Brooks and obviously Junior Stanislas just come back just beforehand when he was sorry when, when he was back before the lockdown he was I thought he was playing well when he was when he was playing um, but yeah I'm, I'm I'm feeling positive about the game I, I think we'll definitely pick up some points hopefully get the win um, but like Charlie said earlier the uh, the threat they have going forward is 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 very you know, very, very good uh, attacking Finn. options. Sorry. <laughs> so, Evian Finn, what's, what's your prediction? Sorry, Chris. Oh, I totally agree. I think Bournemouth will win, especially with uh, Brooks back. And, yeah, I agree with Chris because we have we had a lot of injuries um, just before lockdown and quite a few of them are back. So, we've got a much stronger squad. And, of course, I think Ramsdale will keep us safe. <laughs> <laughs> Love, I'm loving the positivity. So, Charlie, let's end with you then. What, what are your hopes and what are your feelings about tonight's game? No, I agree with everyone. You know, having such a strong squad back together, you know, it's, uh, that's a massive boost, boost to us. And uh, say players like David Brooks coming back, Junior Stanislas, uh, Lloyd Kelly coming back, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a tough decision from the gaffer, you know, to, to pick his strongest 11. So, uh, you know, looking forward to it. Everyone's going to be positive and say, hopefully we can come out with a positive result at the end of it. Well, that just leaves me to say thank you to all four of you for joining me. And I hope you really enjoyed tonight's game. And I hope that's because we, we get a fantastic result. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.